Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In the past, PhD raised from being at the age of bankruptcy during ancient crisis to second leading position in oil retailing industries. And today, we are inviting you to feel the upside and get on the highway of prosperity by placing a buy with a target price of 21.04 Thai baht, indicating a 22.3% upside. We support our recommendation by four reasons. Feel favorable oil volume growth from station expansion and volume per station, a flipped mining margin with stable outlook, enhanced competitiveness from not oil and joint venture business, a legitimate investment confirmed by our valuation. But before diving into detail, let's see PTG at a glance. PTG ranks second in Thai oil retailing under PT brand and further enhanced ecosystem through non oil ventures and biodiesel upstream joint venture. It mainly operates through company owned, company operated models and 12.6 million members of MaxCard ensuring full controls and in station traffic. The majority of station is in provincial area as is aimed to target Thai rules. This is translated into the sale to total volume so of 72%. Look at oil retailing industry, see that the market is highly concentrated. As 23% of station generate 84% of total volume sold. This is why PTG, the fastest growing player, has drive against the tide for the past five years, shown by 1.4 and 1.8 times surge in market share by volume and station respectively. The success will achieve through small town strategy, station conversion, and better brand recognition. So ladies and gentlemen, PTG strong business fundamental and past success are only small part of why we call your back the bigger path lines in the future. So let's start with our first reason, where we believe that its oil volume growth will continue to be favorable. PTG is expanding into more robust demand area like Bangkok and Western region, where oil consumption, growth, and volume per station are more favorable. We see that this is highly feasible due to market opportunities and PTG capabilities. Market-wise, station concentration in key region is still low, and PTG and PT yearly expansion plan requires only 1% of the total non branded station to be comfortable. Also, PTG could expand twice as much with the same amount of carbon while having faster time to market and additional debt growth for expansion. Looking deeper, while the players are competing on the main road, PTG aims to be nearer to the customer by expanding into residential area and sub road. PTG could win over the underserved area by expanding through a super small format and providing more amenities to be in max camp. We believe that this is the winning strategy in Evergrande's core focus model, which allows for localization and two times higher cash back earlier to PG max star. With this, we expect PDG footprint to reach 2.4 thousand stations by 2025. And as they have better brand recognition, PDG SFSG will outperform the industry by 1.3% with an oil volume cater of over 6%. Now, our second recommendation is that the uplifted marketing margin is expected to be stable at a high normal level. We see that a big change in marketing margin could affect PDG EPS by 3%. However, we analyze that a significant drop is highly unlikely due to two factors. First, OPEC's monthly meeting to adjust the production level from the norm of twice a year. Second, Taiwan, a factor seven times more sensitive to marketing margin, is strengthening from favorable real policy rate and Thailand account surplus from the recovery in export and tourism sector. A regression analysis also confirmed a range of 1.8 to 2.2 Thai baht per liter, signifying a high normal level compared to pre-2017. With all of this, we expect PDG to be the main beneficiary from its coho focus model, as they don't need to share marketing margin with the dealers. Not only on our side that look promising, but also non oil and joint venture business. We see that leading players in the station traffic by adding coffee traffic in their station. This is an opportunity for PTG since the market is growing and currently Pantai covers only 12% of total PTG station. Moreover, Pantai can leverage on 12.6 million members of PT Max card to compete in the market. As a result, we expect Pantai to break even in the next three years which will help PTG to become more resilient to marketing situation. Second, synergy between PUP refinery and PTG will be realized. This is ensured by 
PC distribution channel nationwide and support from government to encourage biodiesel usage. We analyze that with excessive demand for PTG, PVP, we run at full capacity throughout the next five years, despite the capacity expansion. And in return, PTG will join an implicit car saving of 0.83 type by per litre by having PVP and as a result, PTG will be covered with traffic creation, better bandwidth commission, and synergy for PVP to cater with improving net profit margin up to 2.1% by 2025 for Kansas year. And lastly, PTG is a legitimate investment confirmed by our valuation. PhD stock price dropped by 50% and now still below pre-COVID level while net profit. We expect to increase 22% as a result of Western demand, station expansion, and effective cost control. However, PDG is now traded around minus one SD in both PE and EV double, which is only 16 and 18 percent of the time in the past five years. So, ladies and gentlemen, a wrap is coming. Let's now return. Our sum of the pie valuation suggests a target price of 21.04 tenbars, incorporating different financial performance and risk profile. We break it out into three units of core, food and beverage, and vertical refinery. We use two-stage FCFM model to all units, SFF and B, where we use three-stage to allow the time to reach the show phase by 2013. First, core unit of 18 baht is mainly driven by three main drivers. And value growth of 6.7% canker uh, due to the growing volume per station and station expansion. A stable marketing margins of around 1.9 baht and non oil sales growth of 19.7% canker, uh, mainly driven by an expensive LBD and other bats. Second, F&B of one bar is mainly driven by 19.6% Kager from Pantai sales over the forecasted period due to the storage tensions and growing volume per store up to 3.2 million bar by 2013. Lastly, a 40% ownership in PVP gives the values of 1.8 bar to over target price with an expected profit of over 1 million bar. This is driven by full utilization rate, double capacity, and variable margins at 3.8 baht per liter. To confirm all valuations, we benchmark its PE and peg ratio with its peers. Both indicate that PDG is undervalued and it is just the right time to buy. Now that we have viewed our tank with our rationale of fear, let's do a final check on risk and HG analysis before getting on that high rate of prosperity. We conduct a risk prioritization model based on likelihood and impact, in which we see that the emergence of EV and marketing margin fluctuation are the two key risks towards our investment. Starting off with EV risk, we sensitize our model using different adoption scenario, which depletes PDG oil cash flow to zero, given that the company didn't do anything. An extreme case with aggressive adoption would incur the outside of 4.92 Thailand per share, but still result in a bold recommendation. However, this is highly unlikely as PDG already has planned to install EV charging station and the government support only extends to EEP test, a scenario with a downside of 2.1 baht, still a buy recommendation. Next, our Monte Carlo model based on marketing margin with 10,000 observation and 5 bad scenarios suggest a 67% buy probability. And even if PDG marketing margin were to fall into a worst case one by eight high bar per share, it still result in a poor recommendation. However, we think that this is highly unlikely, as given the current high bar strength, the brand oil high will need to be in the shale oil boom period, which hasn't happened for the past seven years. Our analysis also extends to E, S, and G, where PDG earned a B plus rating from Refinity. This is as a result of the company being environmental and so socially developed focused as well as earning an excellent rating from Thai IOD, signifying a transparent yet rewarded management. We synthesize our model to see different risks of the Thai and company future performance, but most of our sensitivity models still suggest a buy. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we propose a buy recommendation on PDG under our rationales of fail. And thus, before this stock set apart on highway departure, we would like to invite you to take the ride and let's feel the outside together. Thank you. Okay, so that was an outstanding presentation from TA1.
so now for the next 10 minutes, I would like to uh, ask you to have a Q&A session for this week, for 10 minutes. I will, I will uh, ask you again if uh, about one minute left. Okay. Just to give a background about me quickly before I ask a question, I'm, I'm looking at financials. But in that particular case, uh, it will still be a by recommendation. And next for uh, marketing margin, we have sensitized it to see that if PDG's marketing margin were to drop down at its five year worth, then what would happen? Uh, with this, we see that uh, it would have been equal down to 3.39 per share, but it would result in a whole recommendation. Maybe just a quick one for me before I skip to another one. I, I didn't get that, sorry. On the downsides on EV, uh, four baht per share, can you go back on that one? Yeah, when you say the cricket adoption, what is the impact on, on that chart? Like 9% uh, to your, uh, I would say, volume or your, your future growth expectation? Yeah, so uh, this is the adoption rate in which uh, sensitize EV implementation to total cars in, in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So uh, quickest adoption case here, which is the most aggressive case, is where uh, by Kupan and Thursday, there will be 9% uh, nine, nine of EV to total car. Mm -hmm. And we sensitize this value using the same growth rate moving forwards to see how fast it is until all the car is substituted and becoming EV. So like, like in that scenario, the future growth uh, is still positive. Is that, is that the case? Just want to see uh, how do you, when you factor in the 9%, uh, we get this adoption, right? What's the growth potential looking like for, for the whole volume in the longer term? Um, to address your question, uh, with that regard, if we change to account the 9% substitution rate, the growth will be negative. Because, the, because of the fact that we want to deplete PDG cash flow to zero. So um, they will run off the business. And um, that's not addressing your question. Yeah, I just want to know how, how it is significant, right? What's the impact on, on this 18 baht per share? If you start to factor in, it's only four or five baht per share, right? That's a negative growth of, uh, of 8%. Um, so we don't have a specific number regarding the growth of FCFF until PDG um, fee cash flow decreased to zero. But uh, what we have analyzed here is the fact that each scenario would have different downside um, by incorporating that uh, into our present value and see how much uh, how much type of share would incur if each of the scenario happens. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I have questions on valuation. Why don't you use PE multiples for PDG since this is a commodities players? Okay, um, so to adjust your questions, uh, we use DCF because we want to capture the growth opportunity in the futures. For example, like um, the PPP, that they got to double the capacity in the next two years. And also for the fusion food and beverage se uh, segment, which is Pantai, that allowed Pantai to reach a mature state to 2030. And that's why we use DCF to cover all of that aspect to our valuation over the amount. Yeah, but this is uh, some of the part valuations. Uh, you can, uh, did you ever try to use any multiples for my business, or maybe these there for not my business and so forth? Did you do that before? Could you go to me uh, for more thing analysis, please? We already conduct using the PE as well, and both in the P, uh, our P, PE ratio of PTG and also the PS as well, and we have seen that the um, the rate is all in line with our DCF model. So the PE multiple is already confirmed our valuation. Okay, now back to your valuation pages. Uh, I just wonder why you use why why you don't have any terminal growth value for the audience of business. Um, okay, um, to address that. Um, we go to my yeah. um, Our assumption is based on the conservative case, and here we haven't found any solid proof that the company will further expand their production capacity. So, in the longer term, we that's why we use zero or uh, no terminal growth rate here. And in this case, um, if you go back to the slide 
of page uh, E. Yes, supply side E. Uh, we can see that in the future, uh, implied utilization rate based on biodiesel demand for PTG will exceed 100%. So there will be additional upside regarding capacity expansion that we are conservatively um, not including it. Thank you. Question on your slide 17. So you should be able to go to mine. Excuse me. Oh, what's that? Page 17. Am I getting it correctly? 17. Oh, wait, oh, where's your PE ratio again? Is it ah, the next one. Yeah, yeah. So, why hasn't it been rating since 2016? And given the uh, recent PE of, like, what's the recent PE again? Uh, 15 times? What, what would help it re rate to the 19 times PE on the board you're using as a benchmark? Um, so, uh, you mean by the 16%, right?